in ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. 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 And amen. Lift both hands up to heaven. Ask God to speak to you today through his word. God sent a word into Jacob and he impacted upon Israel. The day your word comes is the day you become free. Joseph was in prison until his word came, Psalm 105. And the king sent for him and released him. Thank you, Father, for what you're sending to me directly today. Pray that prayer. Thank you for what you're sending to me today. Thank you, Lord. There is a word in season. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. From the book of Job, the oldest book in the Bible, the sixth chapter, the 25th verse. In King James Version, just a one-liner. So how possible are right words? Eating is slow on the draw this morning. Amen. How possible are right words? But what does your arguing Reprove. Let us rest there and examine the thought, Wonders in the Word of God, part two. Wonders in the Word of God, part two. Job, everybody's heard the story about Job. That's our background scripture. I'm going to do it slowly so those of you who are note takers can take a note. This is important. So how possible are the right words? Now, we know that the whole world was framed by the word of God. That means anything we need to see or not see needs to be spoken the way God spoke it. So there is force in the word of God. Now, there is a word in season that works wonders when it's spoken in season. Not everything you say works the same way every time. There is a word in season for everything. The Bible says that God's word created the things we can see and the things we can see. He said he created principalities and thrones by the word of God. So how possible is the right one? Now, now, here's an example for you. The Bible says that the world was in darkness and without form. And water covered the whole earth. And God said, let there be light. What in season? Light came. Darkness bowed out. Your darkness is your ignorance. So today we are going to examine using the word of God to solve your problem. How I hear all these things about what people are saying. But I, I'm having a hard time passing my exam. There's a word for it. <laughs> I'm having a hard time deciphering who my spouse is. There's a word for it. I'm having a hard time the way people deal with me. There's a word for it. I get frustrated too easily. There's a word for it. I never have any money to do what I need to do. There's a word for it. But until you go looking for what you need, you can't find it. In the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, I believe it's the seventh verse, it says, ask. It says, seek. And it said, knock. A-S-K. Then finally it said, ask. You shall find. The Bible records, if you call upon me, Jeremiah 33, 3. If you call upon me, I will answer you and show you deep and mighty things you know not. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, <laughs> the Bible says that he has made us able ministers of the 
covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth. The spirit gives life. So when I speak the right word in season, it has the effect it will have if God spoke it. Okay, this is not foreign teaching. So when God said, I am giving you dominion over everything I created. <laughs> that means there are people who can control the lion that you're scared of. Where did they get the power from? They walk on two feet just like you. They can command the elephant, the tiger, the lions to do tricks. And you're entertained. But you won't go near the lion. But the same power they have, God gave you. The problem is you never investigated how to use that power. I'm trying to help you this morning. Do you know to drive a car takes a particular skill? To fly the plane is a different skill. The pilots are instructed on what to do until they start flying. I'm trying to help you. The Bible says in Isaiah, who are those that fly like the clouds? He's talking about you and I. Well, we know what to do about every situation. So the Bible says, for me to use the word of God to solve the problems that are confronting me. Not you, me. Number one. You ready? You got to find a scripture that addresses what you need. <laughs> In the 66 books of the Bible, there is something in there that's written about you. The Bible says that Jesus went in the temple. They gave him the scroll and he found where it was written of him. Something is in there that's written about you. But you got to find it. I remember years ago, I had a business. I was doing contract with some people. After several months, they didn't pay me. I tried to go to a collection agency. The collection agency wouldn't even help me. I tried a lawyer. The lawyer wouldn't even help me. But then I was reminded about the scriptures. There is an answer for the scriptures. So I went searching. I came across Proverbs 14.23. It says, in all labor, there is profit. Talk of the lips only leads to poverty. So I'm poor now because I've worked. They haven't paid me. Lord, you said in all labor, there's profit. I flew all over the place to do this work. God didn't make them pay me. He gave me a job in Power Gold, Arkansas. Within three months, I recovered what they, what they owed me. Never had to call them again. The right word. The Bible says in Romans 15, 4, it says, for whatsoever... Things were written after time, were written for our learning. You have missed that one. Everything that was written in the Bible is written for our learning. But do you apply yourself to it and get out of it what you need to get out of it? In Proverbs 25:11, it says, "A word fitly spoken." How forcible are the right words? A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. You all missed that one. Silver is less in value than gold. But when you speak it in season, in Jeremiah 23, 29, God said this through Jeremiah. He said, is not my word like as a fire? Said the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word is easy. The word is easy. Every barrier has no power over the word of God. Let me explain it before I go to number two. For everything that you see or not see was created by the word of God. And he wrote it down and gave it to you and said, when you want results like I'll get me your God. 
Go to what I've said about that thing and it will work the same way for you as it worked for me. Number two. Number one, you got to find the word. Number two, you got to meditate on the word you found. Joshua 1.8, everybody knows that scripture. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. You have to do what the word says. That you mayest to do all that is written therein. Only then do you become successful. I'm paraphrasing. In Psalm 109, verse 97, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all day long. Psalm 1, verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Psalm 1 is, Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of, seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law doth he meditate day and night. Then everything he doeth shall prosper. So until I meditate on the word of God, I don't juice what's in it. Number three. Pray the scriptures you have just located, you have meditated on. Pray. Why do I need to pray the scriptures? Because I need to remind heaven of his promise. I need to remind heaven of his covenant. In Psalm 89 verse 34, the Bible says, God says this, My covenant will I not break, nor alter what has come out of my mouth. So if it is written down, God said it, and we wrote it down. So when I remind him of what he said, I've committed him to perform. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We understand the word of God is the will of God. And God will not fail to perform what he has spoken. So when I remind him of what he said, I've committed him. Now I'm aware of what he said. I'm expecting him to perform. He will not fail to perform. He said, whatever I have said, my hand is strong enough and long enough to perform it. Hebrew 10, 36. Bible says, for ye have need of patience. This is for me. That after ye have done the will of God, ye may receive the promise. Here's our problem. I pray the prayers, but I don't believe God can do it. So I'm making other alternative arrangements, and I remove God's hands from my issues. He says, once you seek for an alternative, I'm not qualified to be involved. Do you know why he says that? The thing you're looking to, he created. But he gave you power over it. But you're going to, he says, okay, when you get done, let me know. And we'll see about your problem. So when I pray his will, I need to be patient. How do I know I've prayed his will? Because I found it in his book. In John 15, 7, the Bible says, If you abide in me, <laughs> and my words abide in you, and ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, so I know his word, they're in me, I believe it, and I ask him according to the word that is in me, he owes me an answer. Simple math. One plus one equals two. I say what you said to me, you do what you said you do. Number four, declare the scriptures. The word you have found, there is a way to bake a cake. I use this cake often. Because if you don't have the right recipe, it doesn't come out right. 
It will look like a cake, but it will taste like one. <laughs> we said that all that glitters is not gold. There are things I see on TV where they put two chairs and they drape a sheet over it, and in the middle is a bucket of water. But it looked like a bench. So two people will sit at the end, and you come pick, you're about to sit on the bench, and you fall into the water. But it looks like a bench. The Bible says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. If I declare what God has said to me, I'm on my way to a performance by God. Since October, since November last year, we were in the hotel in a one room just like this. We were being reminded church doesn't belong in the hotel. We didn't know what to do. We started praying 2 Samuel 7.10 where God said, I will set you in a place and we were offered this place. We are still praying that prayer. Now we have another place that we are headed to. So when you declare what God says to the hearing of the angels, your neighbors who don't like you, including Satan, he's helpless. The Bible says we speak out of the fullness of our heart. That's why you need to meditate. So when you are convinced about what God said, you don't care who you say it to. Y'all don't hear me. Look, if you are still doubting, you won't open your mouth. I've been calling it a campus before anybody knew what a campus was. A campus is a place secluded for us. He said, I will set you in a place that you move no more. I said, Lord, we need a campus. A campus you can't drive through to go anywhere. Y'all don't hear me. So I've been selling campus since November 2018. We're in a campus now. Y'all don't have, we're in a campus now. <laughs> Nobody drives through here to go anywhere. It's either you're coming to this church or you're not. Yet it's not our own. But we're going to the next campus. Ah. <laughs> Second Peter 1.21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake. Holy men of God spake. What are you speaking? What are you speaking about that issue you went to God for? What are you speaking? 1 Corinthians 2.13 <laughs> Which things also we speak so there's a speaking part. There's a searching part. There's a meditation part. There's a speaking part. Number five. That's the speaking. We declare. Now we speak. In Isaiah 55, 11. Isaiah 55, verse 11. Isaiah 55, 11. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be. I want you to look up here after you write it down. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. This is God speaking. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall, be, it shall prosper in the thing where to accept it. Look up here. The word is Jesus. God sent him to the world to save you and I. Jesus did not return without saving you and I. And he left his word printed on the, in the Bible. He said, you speak it, it will not come back to you void because I said so. The problem that is staring you in the face is waiting for you to tell you what to do after you have found the word of God. 
It says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says this. We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Listen to me. That problem that is staring me in the face, that I have found the word for it. I have meditated on God's word. I have declared it. Now I'm speaking to the problem. Can I show you that in the scriptures? In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says, Verily I say unto you, that whatsoever, whosoever, shall say unto this mountain, listen to me, whosoever, male, female, irrelevant, whosoever shall speak to this mountain, be thou removed, <laughs> And be cast into the sea. Here's the qualifier. No doubt in your heart. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Because we speak and we don't expect. And the thing is standing in front of me looking at me. Are you quite done? But I'm not going anywhere. Because I spoke to it afraid. Hear me. Hear me. <laughs> Ooh, if somebody gets this, it will help you. When you speak to somebody's pet, you are a little afraid. You tell the owner, tell your dog to stop, and the owner will tell the dog, and the dog will stop. But if you use his voice with the same authority, with faith in your heart, it's just a dog. Stop! That dog will stop in his track. He has never met you before. He's a ferocious dog. He bites everybody. But when you speak to it with authority, that dog will stop. Do you know why snakes are somebody else's pet and you're scared of it? I am. Mm -hmm. Because you haven't learned the trick to control the snake. When you, rock, when you walk into the, <laughs> when you get into the woods, the snake starts to run from you and you're running the other way. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> the snake is running and you're running. Why is the snake running? Because he knows you are the master. But you have a master at your mind. So you speak to that mountain. You speak to that problem. Based on what you found from the word of God, you speak to that problem. Number six. Once I have found the scriptures and did all of this, I need to give God thanks for what he showed me. Hear me, hear me. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible says in everything, give thanks. Okay. Let me dwell here for about a minute. In our intercessory prayer, we thank God for where we are. God said in January that this is not our resting place. He told me that from Micah 2.10. He said, you can't stay here. This is not your place. But we need to give him thanks for where we are now. Because if we don't thank him for where we are now, the other campus, we won't smell it. So wherever you're going, hmm, does somebody get this? Wherever I am headed to, but I find myself where I don't want to be. But I have found the scriptures leading me to where I need to be. I have declared it with my mouth. I ought to be thanking him for the word he gave me for that place. Until I thank him for where I am, I'm not qualified to see where he's taking me. In Ephesians 5.20, the Bible says, giving thanks always for all things. Do you know that at night time, 
Sicknesses get more serious at night time. Soon as it gets dark, the fever that left you yesterday starts creeping back. Doctor only, am I in the right place? They come back at night. But as soon as it starts to be daybreak, the fevers leave you alone. The Bible says, give God thanks always for all things. Some of us think when we're going through a hard time, it's a bad thing. Let me help you. Let me help you. God told Abraham to leave his father's house. Abraham was comfortable. Don't put your notebook down. I'm not done yet. God told him to leave his father's house and go to a place where he has prepared for Abraham. When Abraham got there, there was no food. There was no water. There was famine in the land, but yet God said, this is the place. Abraham decided, well, since God has made a mistake somehow, I need to go down to Egypt. But for me to go to Egypt, I need to tell a little lie. I need to tell them, uh, 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 Sarah is my sister. She's not my wife. Just so I could survive, I eat of the land. But he was found out and he was thrown back to that place where there was farming. Now, 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 track with me. He comes back to Canaan with Lot. They had more than what when they left. Now, all of a sudden, the Bible records that Lot's servants and Abraham's servants were having a problem. And Abraham said to Lot, Pick which area you're going to stay, and I'll separate from you. Listen to me. Lot looked towards Sodom because it was green. It wasn't green before. He said, I take this side. Abraham said, Okay, I'll go this other way. There's nothing here. I said, Don't hear me. <laughs> when you do what God says, do, no matter what it looks like. Thank him for where he's sending you. He has your blessings there. You just don't see it. Oh, my goodness. When you obey to the end, that's when the blessings come. Not midway. Man. Look, when God gives you instructions, it's usually multifaceted and multifold. That means you obey one, you can go to two. No blessings yet. You go to three. No blessings yet. You go to four. No blessings yet. Number five, hmm. Number six, no blessings. As soon as I finish number seven, waiting for number eight, here it comes. And the ones that said you were never going to make this thing, they will come to rejoice with you. So give thanks. Finally, after you've done all of this, stand in faith. We know that in Hebrews 11, it says, now faith, track with me, now faith, not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith, the now faith, hear me, hear me, for every challenge you need a new faith. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 18, forget the former things, forget your former successes and your failures, forget them. I'm doing a new thing in your life. Can you see it? So he says this. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is expectation. Whew. If I'm not expecting anything from God, nothing is coming. If I found his word and I prayed it back to him, and I opened my mouth and I declared my freedom. The sickness has no choice. The blessing is on its way. But I have an address that I prayed from. Track with me. There's an address I prayed from for the blessing to come. My address is faith in what he said. 
When I move from my faith, the blessing will come to the old address, but I won't see it. <laughs> the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the, of the devil. <laughs> the thing you pray for, the devil heard you. He knows it takes faith to receive. He'll bring a distraction. Okay, let me digress for a second. Before we moved here, we were in the hotel. When God was preparing a place for us to come to, all kinds of people were having accidents in this congregation. You just didn't know it. <laughs> there were all kinds of weird stuff happening just so we could get out of faith. It's happening again. It's happening again. All kinds of people in this congregation are having all kinds of issues. But they're small compared to where God is taking us to. Listen to me. <laughs> that thing that's going on in your house is not a coincidence. It is not a coincidence you are being tested. Once you pass the test, then you get promoted. Jesus. In Ephesians 6.13, the same Ephesians, we're studying Ephesians now. If you don't come to Bible study, you need to make it a point to come. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all, to stand. Hear me. When all of us have been to school to some level, it don't matter what level you've been to, for you to go from kindergarten to first grade, you get tested. For you to go to that to first grade, problem, test. Second grade to third grade, problem, test. Oh, no, 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 no. When the test is given, it almost seems like your teacher don't like you. <laughs> Dr. Brand? It seems like your teacher don't like you. But he's only trying, he or she is only trying to find out if you remember the materials they gave you. Y'all don't hear me. You think the devil is messing with you when God is testing you to promote you. Mm. Challenges come because he had already showed you the scripture. You said you believe this thing, right? You professed it, you told your friends. Now here come the test and you're falling apart. So the test, man, it looks hard. She's mean. He's mean. The materials that you're being tested on, you had already been given. You the one said you want to go to the next grade, right? That's why you're in the exam hall. Y'all don't hear me. You the one said you want blessings, right? So here come the test. Why are you whining? But you want the blessings without measure. But you can be tested just for one thing. So you can pass and get the blessings God told you to get. It says here in 1 Corinthians 16, as I close, watch ye. He said, stand fast in the faith. <laughs> Quit like men. Be strong. <laughs> so I've been told, thou shalt not steal. But as soon as I ask for a blessing, I get something that don't belong to me. I go to the store to give me more change than I deserve. I thank you, Lord. That ain't yours. And you know it's not yours. It's only a test. You're supposed to give it back. Y'all don't hear me. Sometimes the test, the devil will get in, involved in your test. And tell you God has blessed you, don't take it back. They knew what they were doing. But you keep it. Hear me, someone. You keep what's not yours. Here's Zechariah 5. He says, 
I will send a scroll into the thief's house, and it will consume the wood and even the stone, and it will not live until you are consumed. That's a thief. So they gave me one extra dollar, but I'm waiting for a million dollars. And I said, thank you, God, I'm keeping the dollar, even though it's not yours. So when the word comes that consumes thieves, it's coming in your house. Test, you just failed. And you wonder, why am I still at the same spot? Because the test was sent to your house. You failed the test. You didn't remember what you were taught. Amen? Seven things to solve problems in your life. Number one, locate the scriptures. Number two, meditate on the, meditate on the word you found. Number three, pray the scriptures. Number four, declare the scriptures. Number five, speak to the problem. Number six, give thanks. Finally, number seven, stand in faith. Give God some praise. God wanted me to share with you the laying of hands. The hands are made of dust. And God breathed into man and he became a living being. So God said, some things I'm going to do on earth. I'm going to use hands of people that I have blessed or have called to do a particular thing. So one thing that happens when hands are laid, number one, you receive the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, 17, the Bible says, then laid they, their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Just regular hands. In Acts 19, 6, the Bible says, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came. So God, who used these hands to bring the Holy Spirit upon your life. Number two thing that happens, I'm only going to give you two today. We don't do anything in this ministry we don't explain from scriptures. So that if I'm misleading you, the scriptures will tell you different. Run away from me. In number two, what is in laying of hands? There is a gift in you that God put there. Some of you got the test, some of you took the test, but some of you don't believe the test you took. So you're not even walking close to what the gift, what the test told you your gift is. Because you can't see it. It says in 1 Timothy 4.14, would you put that up, Edie? Neglect not the gift. Thank you, Lord. Neglect not the gift that is in you which was given thee by prophecy. With the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Presbytery. What is a presbytery? A collection of holy men who administer the things of God in church. So I happen to be the pastor, so I'm qualified. So there's a gift in you that needs to be woken up. <coughs> Secondly, 2 second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in you, but put none on my hands. Rise to your feet. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Can you give God a hand clap for praise? The door is open. Is there anyone today? This is a great day to be in the family of God. <laughs>